In the last video, we were able to get SQL Alchemy to generate our own post table. However, if we actually poke around with it, we'll see that there's a couple of issues. So if I go to uh, right click on it and select properties, and I go to columns, all right, we can see that all of these fields are set to not null, and the primary key is set to the ID field. So everything looks good so far. However, when I go to the published column and I go to constraints, I can see that the default isn't set. And so if we go back to our code, I actually uh, made one little mistake, right? This default is not going to give us what we need. Instead, what we need to do is we need to set this to server default um, because it's ultimately the the Postgres server or the database server that's going to actually uh, send the default. So uh, I'm going to put it in quotations as a string. We can just set this to be true. And then if you haven't added this, go ahead and add nullable to false. I'm going to make all of my columns uh, not allowed to be empty. Uh, that's because the server is going to add uh, the default to true for this. So let's try this out. Now, if I hit save right now and I go to my Postgres database and then we can just right click on this, hit refresh. And then we do properties again and I go to column. And then we go to, uh, sorry, go to the publish column. We'll see that there's no constraints. And so this is kind of a limitation of SQL Alchemy because SQL Alchemy will generate your tables, but it does it in a very simple manner. What it actually does is if I go to my main.py file uh, and then it runs this code, I believe this is the code that actually creates the tables. What it does is it'll go through all of our models and it'll look for a table named called post. If it doesn't exist, it will then create one based off of these rules. However, if the table already exists, even though we've changed the uh, different attributes, the columns and things like that, uh, if it looks for the, if it finds a table with that name already in there, it's not going to touch it. So it's not going to help us modify tables and things like that. In fact, if you actually take a look at the documentation, uh, I've got so many tabs open. Let's see if I can find it right here. I search for Alembic. Uh, and so normally when it comes to creating your tables, when it comes to handling migrations, which is uh, a term that's used for changing the columns uh, and the schema of your tables, then you want to use another software called Alembic. Uh, SQL Alchemy isn't really meant for handling database migrations or making changes to it. So that's why we don't see it automatically make those changes. So for now, what we're going to do to get around this limitation is I'm just going to cancel out of this and we're just going to delete the table. So we'll drop the table and then we'll go back to our code and then I'm just going to hit save. And so now that it runs again, it's going to look for a table called posts. Since we deleted it, it's not going to see it. It's going to then go ahead and create our table. And now if I just right click on tables, hit refresh, we should see that we have a post table. And if I go to properties, we can then go to columns, published. And then if we go to constraints, we can see the default set to true. So it looks like that fixed that issue. Now, the second thing I want to do is I want to add our uh, timestamp column because that's very important. We need to know when a post was created. So let's create a field called created, created underscore at column. Now, what's the column type going to be? Well, we're going to use a column type of timestamp. So type in timestamp. We can let VS Code automatically import it. Um, but all it's going to do is it's going to import it from SQL, uh, SQL Alchemy .sql .sql types. And then within here, we have to pass in a property of time zone equals true. So this is going to also add in the time zone. And that's going to be a capital T. Then the next thing we want to do is provide a, it's going to be nullable set to false. So it can't be left empty, but we're going to give it a default value if the user doesn't provide it, which they never will. And so we'll do server default, but we have to do something a little bit different here. I have to uh, import a function or a method called text from SQL Alchemy. So from this right here, SQL Alchemy .sql .expressions, I'm going to do text. And then here we're going to do now, right? Just like we typed in within our Postgres database, you know, if we wanted to manually do this, we would just go under um, the column. Let's say we had to create a column. We can just go in there, go into constraints, and then type in now like that. And that's going to generate a timestamp. So we're doing the same thing, but we're just doing it through Python code now. So once again, we'll save this. I'm going to drop this table so that we recreate it. 
and then we'll save it one more time. This is going to trigger a reload and then a refresh of the table. We should now see it. So let's go into properties. Let's take a look at our columns. We've got the created at column. And then if I go under constraints, we can see the default is now set to the current time. So we've got that working. Let's just quickly test this out. So I'm going to go into view, edit all rows. And I'm just going to create a post. We'll save this and let's make sure all of the default values get set. Looks like that's good. And it looks like the time is set just right as well.